Hello everyone, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting for Kip Lanes and Abweb from Aero in Friedrichshafen, Germany. About a month ago, Garmin introduced a whole new line of inexpensive avionics for kit planes and for the light sports segment. They haven't really had a chance to go into the details on these new boxes, but here at Aero, I caught up with Jim Alpizer, and I got a chance to get a closer look at them with the home builder's uh, concerns in mind. So here's Jeff. So back at the end of March, Garmin introduced great new features and sensors for G3X. Uh, it's been an incredible reception, and uh, the booth has been packed to people to come check it out. Let's go take a look. So the first thing we're going to look at with the great new features and capabilities of G3X is our autopilot functionality that we've added to uh, G3X. And in fact, Garmin is now producing an autopilot for G3X. Uh, again, this is uh, an autopilot for the experimental and light sport crowd. Uh, offers a lot of incredible capabilities in the autopilot, um, you know, for not a lot of cost, quite honestly. Uh, each servo is going to cost around $750. Uh, you can be a two-axis autopilot, a three-axis autopilot, uh, when you get our optional mode controller as well. And quite honestly, that is one of the, the greatest things on the new, uh, uh, the new system is our autopilot controller. Um, that's going to offer you a whole lot more capability uh, in addition to uh, what you can get just by uh, buying the servos themselves. So I'll start very basic and simple um, and talk about the autopilot functionality. Primarily, your autopilot functionality can be controlled by your primary flight display uh, using uh, soft keys and your buttons and knobs across the side here. Uh, but if you want a, a fair amount more capability with the autopilot, we have our optional GMC 305. Uh, for about $800, this uh, mode controller can give you a level button, and with the level button, it actually will uh, allow the airplane to recover from an unusual attitude just by pressing that blue button. Um, some of the other great options that you get with the uh, autopilot controller are the uh, is the ability to uh, to actually uh, uh, fly with a flight director uh, without actually having the autopilot engaged. Um, you can do airspeed scheduled uh, climb outs and descents, and uh, it's, uh, it really is a, a tremendous option just to have those dedicated buttons in front of you because it's going to save you quite a bit of uh, time and energy uh, when you're flying, um, just be able to punch up and hit that button as opposed to uh, a lot of other activities that are going on with your primary flight display. Getting into some of the, the flight director functions and capabilities, uh, we can engage the flight director just simply by pressing the flight director button on the uh, on the uh, the mode controller. There, you'll notice that the the bars of the flight director are hollow uh, when uh, you actually turn on your flight director. That basically means the autopilot's not following the flight director. Uh, if your bars are solid, Magenta, uh, then you actually will have the uh, the autopilot engaged as well. Uh, and then, real simple heading control, nav control will. Uh, allow it to uh, um, follow whichever course guidance you prefer and uh, you can also dial in altitude and do altitude captures. One of the nice things about the uh, the autopilot as well is uh, the ability to set it up for uh, takeoff and go around mode as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and hit our toga button. It's going to give us about a seven degree pitch up and we're going to start building a little bit of speed. And up, up, and away we go. Um, with the uh, the flight director and the autopilot functioning, we have this really elegant trim wheel uh, as part of the the mode control, and this is uh, the type of functionality that you're going to get you feel in a lot of high end airplanes. So it has a really elegant uh, and uh, uh, great feel to it. We can adjust our climb rate using the trim wheel, and we're pivoting around the aircraft axis. So you take the trim wheel down. That means you're putting the nose up. You notice on our uh, primary flight display now, we're actually uh, getting at a uh, critical angle there, as you can tell by the uh, AOA indication. Uh, one of the other great new products that Garmin has introduced is uh, an AOA probe for G3X. And uh, we'll kind of keep manipulating our demonstration here. And uh, you can see it's clearly telling us we need to get that nose pointed downhill. So we'll go ahead and uh, bring that on down now. One of the cool things about the AOA indication is that obviously it's only going to show up there when your angle of attack uh, becomes a particular issue or threat. 
So that's some of the great new features we have with uh, G3X. Let's go ahead and take a look behind the scenes and take a look at the new hardware. So we're really excited to uh, bring out the GSU-25. This is a new uh, Adahars design for Garmin uh, for the uh, experimental and light sport crowd that, uh, that allows you to get a really small Adahars uh, at, a, at a great price. Uh, we're selling the Adahars by itself for about $800, and so that way if you have a two display setup or even a single display setup, um, it's going to allow you to uh, to get a backup Adahars uh, at a great price. Uh, again, the uh, you can see the plumbing coming in here. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our new AOA sensor uh, as well, which we also have on display here. Uh, but you can see the uh, the connections, uh, very very solid connectors and connections on there, and the plumbing's all ready to go. Um, you'll also notice as we take a closer look at some of these new components, um, little green flashes of light. Um, hopefully they're green, and they probably are. Um, that the green basically means it's uh, it's a uh, an LRU and it, with a good health status. This is our new AOA probe. We actually have three different variants of this AOA sensor. Um, it, it comes in a uh, unheated probe, a heated probe, and a heated regulated probe. So for whatever type of flying you might be doing, we've got the right fit for you. So Garmin's also re-engineered our engine uh, monitoring computer for the, uh, the G3X. Uh, what we've done here is just separated it out from the, uh, what we used to have uh, air data and engine monitoring all together uh, along with the AHARS, and we've separated that out so it allows you to, uh, to get this box mount it a little bit closer to the engine compartment and minimize your uh, your wire runs. These are the new Garmin servos for G3X. Uh, they're called GSA-28s and uh, the design of these servos is, is fantastic. Number one, they're some of the lightest weight servos uh, in the experimental and light sport market um, that there are and again the price is incredible on them. It's uh, approximately $800 for the uh, the servo itself um, and you have different bracketry uh, depending on the, the type of uh, aircraft that you're installing it in. The design of the servo uses basically, a, uh, leverages a lot of the design characteristics of Garmin certified autopilot GFC 700. So it's a kind of a slip clutch design where you do not have a shear pin in there. So when you override the controls, the slip clutch basically lets go and allows you to overpower the, uh, the system itself. Um, if and when you had to do that, you would, uh, you would not break the shear pin so you avoid a maintenance uh, activity. We've also introduced the GMU 22. Um, this is a, a new low cost magnetometer for the G3X. One of the other subtle enhancements we've made with uh, G3X sensors are now low density connectors. So previously we had higher density connectors and uh, we listen to comments and feedback from uh, people that are doing installations and uh, understand that uh, the preferences for the low density connectors are a little easier to work around. So uh, you'll see that it featured in all of the, the newer G3X uh, sensor designs.